the heavens, if the heavens don't open for me and you, let me tell you, we can never succeed on the earth. And that is why, oh, um, that devil is a liar. That is why we are always having people struggling and complaining to us and saying, how comes I don't seem to, to break through in life? And the people who are not saved, they're always successful. Why? What's the problem? You know what the problem is? We have not understood our economy. <sighs> Jehovah. One as first son. Mm. Mm. May you understand your economy. <sighs> Lift up your head and say, Lord, let the heavens be open over me. Let, let me give you an example. I, I want to show you this example of how powerful open heavens are. There was a man called Elijah. Elijah, 1 Kings chapter 17, I think, just comes and stands before Ahab and he says there shall be no rain or dew for three and a half years, something like that unless at my word and then the guy runs away for three and a half years the Bible says there was no rain or dew in other words it was farming are we in agreement up to that point? now what does God tell Elijah? God tells Elijah Go to the brook. Jesus. But there, you know, I was shocked. I think for the first time, I was going home recently, and I saw at the river almost dried up. I said, God have mercy on this nation. But thank God for the rains. Hallelujah. So he stands, he stays at the brook, and the Bible says, God told Elijah, I have commanded the ravens to feed you. You know what are ravens? Ravens feed on meat. But then God says, I have commanded them to feed you. That's why I want to tell you, if heaven is open over you, God can even use the devil to bless you. And demons to bless you. I'm telling you. They, they, they may not like it, but they will bless you. He says, I have commanded ravens that feed on meat. They will not eat. They will bring it to you. And he says, you eat the meat and then drink the water. Now, think with me. The whole nation is in drought and famine. Animals are dying. Families are going hungry. But the prophet is eating meat. What about that? The man is having... Uh, I mean... Is even better than before. The man is eating meat every day and drinking water. Why? It is because even though the heavens were shut over the nation of Israel, but over Elijah, heaven was open. And what amazed me is this, that after a while, the Bible says, the brook dried up. But nowhere does it say the ravens stopped bringing meat. So it is the natural supply that is not reliable. The heavenly supply will never run out. The heavenly supply, when heaven is open over you, it will never run dry. It shall never run out. You will always have all sufficiency. And that's what the children of Israel discovered for 40 years. Oh, Jesus. 40 years. The guys used to eat manna for 40 years. And there is no day that God said, I'm going to bring rationing. It was so serious, God said, no storehouse. No storehouse. You just eat what comes today and don't think about tomorrow. Ah, Jesus. Don't even think about tomorrow. Eat what comes today because as long as the heavens are open, you shall be sustained. I declare to you in Jesus' name. May you learn the keys and the, and the, and the wisdom and the truth 
of how to open the heavens over your life. Amen? So Elijah walked and, uh, and opened heaven. Mm. What does first son? Let me show you another example in uh, Revelation chapter 12. I think I will not read. Um, I'm just going to refer to it. Whew. Jesus. Are you enjoying the word of God? Revelation chapter 12. The Bible says the, the devil was cast out from heaven. And then it says the devil now began to chase the woman that was to give birth. Now this woman is a picture of the church. After a while, the Bible records that this woman was sent into the wilderness to be nourished by God. By that I mean, it is possible for a believer to be nourished in the wilderness. Your location does not define your breakthrough. Because even in the wilderness, God can nourish you. What you need, ladies and gentlemen, is just one. Let the heavens be open. And if there is a prayer I have prayed for my life, and for my family, and of course for Life Church, is that Lord, let the heavens begin to open up. Let me say something I, I didn't want to say, but let, let me give you this. How many of you remember 2 Corinthians chapter 12? You remember that, that scripture? It says, Paul is speaking, it says, I know over, I know over who? Of a man who, for a period of time, he went up where? To the third heaven. Now, if there is a third heaven, there is a second and there is a first. We may not be sure of a fourth heaven, but we are sure there is a second and there is a first heaven. Now, many people who study the Bible, they have come to this conclusion to say, the first heaven is the heaven of man. The second heaven is the heaven of angels. The third heaven is the heaven of God. Amen? So when we say the heavens must be open, we must believe God that all the heavens will be open. Not just one. Many people, oh Jesus, many people, the contention we are dealing with is the second heaven. That's where the contention is. That's where the battle is. Because in the heaven where angels rule, imefungikana, in the spirit, nothing can move. Hmm. And you see someone like Daniel. Daniel, the Bible says, when he began to pray, for 21 days, the man was praying, and the Bible says, it seemed like heaven was silent. Nothing was going on. But the man was praying. But then, after the 21st day, the angel of God comes and tells Daniel, from the first day that you began to pray, your prayers were heard. Let me tell you something. Do we have people who pray in this house? Let me tell you. The problem to answered prayer is not that God did not hear. Let me say it again. The reason why you don't have the answer that you've been praying for, it is not because heaven, God, did not hear. He heard. And actually says, the first day that you began to pray, I heard it. Every prayer that you have ever prayed in God, in Christ, God has already heard that prayer. 
And for some of you, it is not even 21 days. For some of us, we have been praying for years and we cannot see what you have been praying for in our hands. So what is the problem? The problem was not in the going up of the prayer, but it was in the coming down of the miracle. <sighs> Jesus. Mm. Praise God. The coming down of the miracle. That's where the problem was. <laughs> Jesus. Because when the angel came down with the answer, when he came to the second heaven, he was intercepted by a principality called Pasha. And for 21 days, there was a battle going on in the heavenly realms to make sure that the answer does not come down. I declare in the name of Jesus, any prayer that has been intercepted in the spirit concerning me, I declare, let it now be loosed in Jesus' name. Oh, Jesus. The problem was there that when the answer was coming down, it was intercepted. And the reason why ah, the prayer was intercepted, it is because that angel that was given the answer to bring was a messenger angel. Was an angel whose work was to bring messages alone. He could not withstand the principality in the spirit. But thank God, God does not just have messenger angels. God also has warrior angels. And what happened? The chief general called Michael was released. And the contention was broken. And the messenger angel was sent and he brought the answer. May the Lord send warrior angels to fight for us in the name of Jesus. Ooh, Jesus. Let me tell you, I came to a place in my life a few years ago and I said my life cannot remain the same. There must be a breakthrough in the spirit. And I'm here to declare to somebody by the spirit of God, there shall be a breakthrough in your life. Things shall not be stagnant anymore. We release the power of God in the spirit and we say, let the heavens begin to open. The heavens must open. Cha, 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 cha. Okay. Now, I have two more scriptures, but uh, should I say this or move on? Sh shake your neighbor, tell them, your heavens is opening. Your heaven is opening. I'm telling you, I, I know what I'm talking about. I pray that we shall not be walking on the streets like zombies. You know, you know, there are people who are just walking. You come to church, you are just there. You are singing, but you are not singing. You are hearing, but you are not hearing. You are praying, but you are not praying. You are just like a zombie. Notice I have not pointed at anyone. I was talking to those people who did not come to church today. But let me tell you, there, there must be movements in the spirit. Heavens must begin to open. <sighs> Heavens must begin to open. And we speak in this, on this ground because we know the time where we're in right now. We speak over this church that we are ascending into higher heavens in the spirit. We are, we are breaking barriers. We are breaking limitations. We are destroying gates. We are closing, breaking doors and accessing the throne room of God. We are coming to a place where we shall begin to experience realities in the spirit. Realities. Not theories, but realities. Jehovah. My God, if there is anything that has been, you know, hindered in the spirit from coming to you, we declare right now, may the Lord begin to send warrior angels. May the Lord begin to send warrior angels. Oh, Jesus. If your monies are blocked in the spirit, we say, let them be loosed. Oh, Jesus. Ah. Whatever you bind on the earth, even in heaven, it shall be bound. 
whatever you loose on the earth, even in heaven, it shall be loosed. I, I don't think I will say what I wanted to say. But, but let me take this further. Go to Hosea chapter 2 verse 28. Because I want to take this thing further. I think this kind of preaching needs, need, 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 needs a preacher. But uh, it is okay. Teaching is also good. And once in a while we release decrees. I want us to read Hosea chapter 2. <laughs> Out loud. Verse 21 and 22. And please don't whisper. Read out loud. Is that okay? All right, let's try. One, two, go. I will answer. And they shall answer. The earth shall answer. With grain. With new wine. With oil. They shall answer Jezreel. I, I, I was looking at this scripture um, a while ago. And I saw something that uh, really blessed me. Some of, your, of the versions we have read, they say, I will, I will hear heaven. But then the new King James says, I will answer heaven. I will hear I will answer. Now, that should not confuse you because if you understand the original language, you will understand clearly what it says. According to biblical language, for example, in that scripture, and also in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, chapter 10, verse 6, where he says, having in readiness to punish or disobedience when your obedience is complete. That, that, that portion of scripture, the word hearing is the same word as answering. Because to the, to the Jew, because Paul was also a Jew, the proof that you have heard is your response. So, to the Jew, you cannot prove you have heard by nodding your head. Or by smiling. You prove that you have heard by answering. So when he says shalom, you don't say, you also respond. You say, shalom. <laughs> Irene. Alright? So, you are hearing will be demonstrated by your answering. And that is why I believe that you can use both. But I want to use that word answering. And I want to show you from this scripture how God answers prayer. How does God answer prayer? When, and, and again, the story of Daniel proves it very well. When you come to a place of prayer, Somebody say prayer. And you begin to pray to God. God will hear your prayers. But how God answers your prayer is this. He doesn't necessarily come to you and give you what you need. What he does from that scripture is that he speaks to your heaven. He answers your heaven. Hmm. He answers your heaven. Because heaven is the throne of God. And as we saw earlier, heaven also is where your treasure is. So what God will do, he will answer your heaven. He said, hey, heaven, do something for that man. Do something for that woman. Do something for that family. Do something for that church. Then when heaven hears the voice of God, then heaven answers 
your earth. And it tells earth, earth, listen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The heavens declare your glory. Can you see that? So, heaven begins to respond. If there are any demonic principalities in the heavenlies, they are moved. They are moved. They are removed. So that the heavens now can begin to respond to the word of God. Then the heaven now will speak to your earth and say, earth, you have no option but to respond to this man. And when earth hears heaven's word, then the earth answers by giving you grain, wine, and oil. What does that mean? Whatever you need, the earth will give it to you. I know that you love God. I know there is no problem with you. If there is, we will deal with it. But let me tell you, what we need to deal with are the closed heavens of our head. We must deal with closed heavens and open these things. And I want to finish by telling you this. When heaven is open of our church, of an individual, of our family, there is nothing that is impossible. What would have taken 10 years can be done in one day when the heavens are open. What has made men and women struggle for, for years, God can give it to us in a single moment when the heavens are open. And Jesus, in jo Matthew chapter 3, verse 16, comes to John and he stands at the Jordan River. And when John looks at him, he says, I know this man. He says, I am not worthy to be baptized by you. Do you know how serious it was? And, and please allow me to just to give this an example. It is like telling, coming, um, you'll allow me please. It's like coming to, to our sister, Penina, and ask you, Penina, baptize Pastor Sunta. Can you try? <laughs> That's what John was trying to do. He said, no, I'm not worthy to baptize this man. But then Jesus made a very powerful statement concerning heaven. He said, permit it to be so now. For it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And then the Bible says, John said, okay, if that is the case, I will do so. And I can imagine he did it with a lot of fear. He said, do I do it or do I not do it? And then he said, okay, let me do. When he baptized Jesus, and Jesus stood from the Jordan River, the Bible says, for the first time, after 400 years, the heavens were open. Because from the book of Malachi to the book of Matthew is 400 years. For 400 years, the earth was existing under a closed heaven. Until Jesus, one man, one man, the son of God, came to a righteous position and he said, for now, I must fulfill all righteousness. And he steps forward in humility and says, baptize me. And when he's baptized, the Bible says the heavens were opened over Jesus and the spirit of God descended and the voice of God came down. And I'm here to tell you this as I finish. If you want your heaven to be open, fulfill all righteousness. There is a righteousness that you must fulfill for the heavens to be opened. <sighs> Jesus. Ah, are we communicating? We can never experience an open heaven if there is a righteousness that has not been fulfilled.
Now, how do you apply that? If you know something God has addressed in your life, and you have not dealt with it, the heavens will never be open until you deal with that matter. It is that simple. Let me give you two or three examples as we finish. Some sisters, some people, sisters, one of the reasons why your heavens could be shut, it is simply because you have not submitted to your husband. Again, I'm pointing up. You have not submitted to your husband. And Paul speaking to, first, to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 11, he says, uh, women must have a symbol of authority over their head because of the angels. What he's saying is this. If you, if you begin to engage in the spirit, you are dealing with angels. And if you don't have a symbol of authority over your head, guy, it will be a knockout. Because the angels are seeing. And they want to see a symbol of authority. Now when he says a symbol of authority, it's not a kitamba. It is a wife who is under submission to the husband. The husband is a symbol of his authority. And he says, when you deal in the spirit with authority over you, you are covered. And then Peter speaks to the husband. Now this is dangerous. Let me speak as when I'm standing here. He speaks to husbands and says, Husbands, live with your wives according to knowledge. See you, Janja. <laughs> you know, sisters, you may not know, some of us brothers, we misquote that scripture. It's not about Kwana Ujanja. He says, Live with them according to understanding because they are hairs with you of the, of the grace of life. So you need to know how to live with them because if you don't, your prayers will be hindered. So a wife, may there be no, uh, by the way, we are not saying that uh, you begin to do the ministry of hindering prayers. But let me tell you, if, if the husband does not know how to live with a wife according to understanding, the heavens will be shut. Your prayers will be hindered. When it's going up, the devil will say, ah, who are you? Uh -uh. There, is a, there is a righteousness they have not fulfilled. Funga you. No matter how they pray, nothing will happen. 